guys, welcome to our Comp 10 video about filter. So a filter takes in a set and a function called a predicate function, which will test every single one of the elements in the set. Yeah, so the predicate is the type of the function, which is gonna take in an element, whatever you want, any type, and then gonna return a Boolean. So for example, if we had a list of birds and we wanted to filter it to find all the ducks. So our predicate would take in a bird and our test condition would be to see whether or not the bird is a duck. And if it were a duck, we would return true. Yeah, so then that predicate, which is going to be our test, is going to go into our filter function and the filter function is going to test with the predicate every element in the list or array that you give it as the first parameter to filter out basically all the elements that are ducks. So then filter is going to return a list of elements that satisfy the predicate. Let's talk about mapping a set of data now. So when you want to map a set of data, map will take in, again, a list of whatever you want, and then a transform function. So the transform function is going to take in an element of whatever type you want, and then it's gonna return another element of the same or different type. So for example, if we had all our ducks in a row from last time and we wanted to find the length of every duck's beak, we could do that using a transform function. Yeah, so in that case our transform function would take in a bird and then return uh, the bird's beak length. So our map would take in a set of data, birds, and then return a set of data, but this time it's going to be the bird's beak length. And these two sets of data would be the same length. So unlike filter, where presumably you would end up with a smaller set of data, with map, they're the same length. But with map, the type of the data may have changed. So now for reduce. So reduce will take in a set of data, a reducer function, and a memo. So our reducer function is going to take in the same memo and then an element of the set of data and it's going to return um, the memo element. So in your reducer function, it's going to apply this to every element in your list or array, doesn't matter what set of data, and then it's going to change the memo based on something about that element and it's going to return the changed memo. So while that all might sound a little confusing, um, we can use our example from last time to uh, help clarify any issues. So for example, if we had our mapped list of all of the beak lengths, we could use a reducer function to find the total length of duck beak available to us at any given time. Yeah, so in this case we'd start our memo at zero and then when the reducer is applied to the element, it's going to increase the memo by the beak's length and then return the memo at the end, when it reaches the end of the set of data. The reason we start the memo at zero is because we have to give the memo an initial value, but we don't actually want it to affect any our output data. So if you're using strings, for example, it could also be an empty string. Just depends on the element you're using. So reduce is going to take in the set of data, memo, and the reducer, and then it's going to return one element. So to wrap it all up, filter is going to take in a set of data and give out a set of data that's either the same length or smaller, and then map is going to get a set of data and then return a changed set of data, the same or different type, and then reduce is going to take in a set of data and reduce it all down to one element. Yeah, and that's all for today. Thank you so much for watching.